questions while we go over stuff, just stop me and we'll get it all straightened out maybe. Or I'll confuse you even more. Take your pick. <laughs> um, basically, I guess the way I'm going to start this first is there are a lot of different sizes of top orders. And for me, the calmer it is, the more I tend to want to go small. As it gets rough, I go big, and when it gets real rough, I find the biggest thing I can stick out there, like a super spook or something like that. You know, something big, loud, noisy, something that'll attract them. I'll even go to uh, something I'm getting ready to start making, a popping cork. And uh, I found a way to make some real loud ones, and um, they work real good in real rough water. It's uh, something I picked up from when I was in Louisiana last year and brought it back up here. But um, like I say, the smaller, uh, the calmer it is, the smaller you go. Um, you'll go down to the uh, mirror mullets, as I call them, by um, Mirror Lure, and they make a real small one, then they make a little bigger one. Um, can you get me that? Yeah, I'm going to get um, a little mirror mullet. Yeah, but get me that uh, Yozuri too, Judge. Um, but that's kind of how I judge things. Um, when it's a normal day, probably what I'll throw yeah, more than anything else. Yeah, that's the mirror mullet in the standard size. They make one, one size down from that too. Um, and each one has a little different rattle on it. I think I'll stop that season here. Um, and sometimes it's the rattle that makes it work, you know. But the motion's what attracts it to them, the noise, the rattle. Sometimes that's what makes them eat it. Today, they would not eat a top order, in a standard top order. Um, the guys were throwing the rattlers at them. They got a nice sound to them. They come up, blow up on them, and go away. Come up, blow up on them, and go away. A lot of fish, but they just wouldn't commit to anything. Uh, sometimes you can change the hook and you can put that uh, drop down hook on there and that helps, but I don't have time for all that. You know, it's, it's just added expense for doing stuff. If they aren't going to eat that, then what I'll tend to do when they're like that is I'll take a worm hook and uh, get whoever's with me when it blows up to drop a worm hook in there or a gold spoon right next to where the top order is and you generally get a hook up doing that way that's what worked today and um but anything like that you can actually get a um a, what is it creek what's the garlic smelling ones um something creek but anyway they're made out of virgin rubber and you can put it on a um, weightless worm hook and they'll actually float for you you can keep them right on the surface and they'll dart back and forth and float. And the drum really like them. They like that garlic smell a lot. Too. Rage, Rage made something like that a while back. Deep Creek lures, that's what it is, Deep Creek. Um, but they make a real garlicky smell of one out of virgin rubber and it floats, you know, and stuff. And I like that a lot, other than the smell of garlic. It kind of makes my eyes water sometimes. But, um, that's kind of it for, for doing that. The big thing with the top orders, especially the um, Zara Spooks, the, the Mirror Lures, and the Rattlers, is you walk them like a dog. And it's kind of like having to learn how to pat your head and rub your belly at the same time. It's a lot of tap and a little reel. And the more you get that tap down, and people want to pull it, and that's not how it works. It's tap, 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 tap. And you get a cadence going. And sometimes they don't like the speed you're you're pulling it at and so you can speed it up or slow it down and sometimes I'll get fish that come up and follow it follow it follow it and when they do I'll just pat 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 and I'll stop it and when I stop it they'll usually dive on it like that but you got to aggravate them a little bit sometimes you can just be walking across the, the top of the water and just stop for a second and give it about a 10 count and before you count the 10 all of a sudden he comes up and eats it because it's just sitting there and just they can't stand especially drum drum are just 
they're awful when it comes to eating the top order. They don't care what time of day it is, whether it's dark, or cloudy, or bright, or you know, they're going to eat a top order. Um, ladyfish will do the same thing, but if you're fishing ladyfish, I prefer a clear, completely clear um, top order. They have great big eyes. They can find stuff real, real well. And if you put that clear top order on there, they're going to eat it. Um, it's, it's amazing what it'll do. And at night, it's even better. Um, you get near the, the lights at the bridges and stuff, and you throw it up in the darkness, and you sit there and you just tap it coming out, down current with it. As soon as it breaks the light, those ladyfish are going to dive all over it. But that clear makes all the difference in the world. You can throw everything outside there, and they'll just ignore it most of the time. The clear, they can't decide what it is. They think it's probably a shrimp, but they don't know. And there's something that just causes them to eat it. You know, they just they can't stand it because they can't see it, but they hear it, they feel it, they can detect the motion of it, and they're going to eat it. So um, when you fish a ladyfish, track something real clear, just completely clear. It makes a lot, a lot of difference. One thing that people don't consider as top order are popping corks, and popping corks are a big part of what I do. Um, right now, speckled trout are on the popping corks real well, and this just happens to be a chartreuse head. I use just a standard lead head, which just like this, no paint on it or anything else. I actually, oops, I actually think it works a little better than the painted heads a lot of times. But um, you know, I'm using a real loud popping cork. This is one I make, and um, it just works real well. And I'm not scared to pop it. And when I pop it, it's like pow, 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 and then I let it sit. And you can even put a drop down on here. You can run one about this deep and you run another one about halfway up and uh, the drum will hit it sometimes you get a double header with the trout on it um, but it really attracts a lot of stuff the lady fish especially with this Christmas tree grub on a standard lead head with no paint on it they'll come up and annihilate it and um, they just love it do you so, uh, find your strikes when uh, pop pop I've struggled with the popping cork. I, I, don't, I don't do well. And, um, I don't understand how often, because <clears throat> you got a quarter a quarter ounce lead head on that, so when you pop it, pop it, it straightens out pretty quick. Yeah. Now you let it sit there. They they yep. hitting it when the when the lure sitting like that. You think? I'll let it sit right there. Um, drum are the same way. That there again, it's a Louisiana trick that I learned years ago, and. Um, they just don't care whether it's sitting or anything else. I like a curly tail on it because it always moves. Hmm? Better than a paddle tail? Oh yeah, much better than a paddle tail. The curly tail moves all the time. So even though it's sitting there, if there's any current, it's still got motion to it. It's still how, moving. How about a shrimp? Like a DOA shrimp or a storm shrimp? I'm going to go with what you're seeing right there, 90% of the time. Um, the DOA shrimp, they work. But I just, I like something a little different than that. Uh, during the winter time, when it gets real clear, I'll get a um, blue water candy uh, shrimp in that color right there and uh, use it a lot. And that color, if you're not using it, y'all are missing out because the trout are eating it up right now. The other day, the day before yesterday, every day runs together now. Uh, day before yesterday, we couldn't get them to eat a live bait. I put on lead heads and those uh, Christmas tree grubs right there. Flounder ate it, drum ate it, and I think we wound up with 12 drum. And are you fishing north of Topsail or are you fishing Topsail? <laughs> I'm fishing everything from Ball Head Island to Swansboro. How about that? So you narrowed it down. East of seven. <laughs> I gave you an 80 mile stretch. And that's exactly what I do. Is I fish from Ball Head Island to Swansea. What was the name of that creek? Teach you some tricks, man. East of 17. Yeah. East of 17. East of 17. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> but yeah. Um, 
No, you can't complain with six trout. If you want trout right now, they are wearing that out, that color right there. Catch 2000, 19 color, they're wearing it out. That's the other one they're liking a lot right now too. It's an 18 uh, and broken glass. I've been, um, That's, both of those are Catch 2000. I've been beating them up. I was using a Zara Spook this morning as a combo top. And, um, top order's been good with that one. I like the X-Wrap Greenback mm -hmm. for um, a lip bait. As far as colors of top order goes, pick a color that you can see. Um, everybody just oohs and eyes over 808s, especially in dirty water, and they might see that a little bit better. But if you go outside and you hold any of these up to the sun and look at it, it's black. And that's what they're going to see is black. So what I tell people is buy a color that you can see. That's one of my favorite colors right there. It's a, they call it a chartreuse. It looks more yellow to me. And um, I use the old um, redhead with the white body a lot because some days I can see it better. Um, but it's whatever you can see the best that you know you're working the lure right and it's not fouled or anything like that because you know everything gets fouled. All my top order stuff I tie with a loop knot and I tie an itty bitty loop knot. I have a way to tie a loop knot and make it real small so it doesn't foul in the loop a lot. The hooks don't come up and catch it. There are times when it's real rough that I'll actually go up to a 40, even 50 pound liter short piece, yay big, and that keeps it from wanting to foul. And there again, I put it on with a loop knot, but it still keeps it from fouling so much because it's stiff, it's hard, it's not, not worth it. I use wire when the bluefish are running in the spring, when we get those big 12, 15 pound bluefish that come in here. They can't stand top water. They got How long a wire do you use? Do what? How long a wire leader do you use? Trace about yay big, number nine. And uh, just hay wire twist both ends of that. They still walk pretty good with that? Walks real well with okay. it because it's a loop. But a loop um, the big thing you got to watch for is any kink that gets in it because if it kinks, it's going to break and it's going to be gone. Your feeling's going to be hurt. At least mine aren't. You know, I can't stand seeing eight dollars fly out out the window or nine dollars fly out the window. But um, that's kind of the the whole thing about it. Uh, the trout part of it. And I'll talk about this just because we're talking top water. If you get trout and they come up and you get a hit on the way in, that's a single trout. There's not many trout there. You might have a hit every other time you throw out or every four or five times you throw out. And that's single trout. That's not a, 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 a big thing of trout. When you are reeling in and you get like Boom, 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 and it stops and you move it three or four feet and you get another boom, boom of trout coming up trying to eat it, then you are in a school of fish. A trout is a lazy fish. He's going to hit it maybe twice, three times at the most, and if you don't catch it, he's going away. He's going to spend his time somewhere else. Um, so anytime you're in a big school of, of trout, you're going to get a lot of multiple hits. So if you're only getting single hits periodically, it's just single fish floating around. I say single fish, it may be two or three fish, but you're not in a school of fish. You know, you're better off going somewhere and looking for that knot of fish because the more hits you get, the more you're gonna, gonna get. Right now, the river should be on fire. The uh, Cape Fear River should be on fire with speck of trout. It's that time of year for it. Um, How about water fish? For trout, I'll, I'll throw top water in as much as nine foot of water because trout like to suspend a lot. They're not just sitting on the bottom like drums tend to sit on the bottom. With drum, four foot of water, five at the most, um, they're not gonna call, be called up real easy if they're sitting on the bottom in five feet of water. They're gonna wanna sit there. When you get 18 inches of water, that's perfect for it, you know? A trout likes at least six, five to six feet. That's their, their comfort zone. 
and trout's going to be in that kind of water depth and anywhere where it'll roll off. Um, early this spring, the, the drum were all right on the edge where it rolled off on the waterway. We were throwing out the waterway and bringing it up the edge, and as soon as it came up the edge, those drums were sitting on that edge, and they were just coming up and, and grabbing hold of it. It was really nice. Um, but yeah, typically five foot of water at the top where it's all going to be. Nice thing about the drum is they're going to hit it regardless of what time of day it is. They don't care. Trout are more of a morning, late afternoon top water fish, but drum will hit it any time it comes across their head. And, you know, if you want to use a little procure on the back of it, that's not going to hurt anything either. Trout fishing, I tend to stay away from scents. I don't think it works as good as non-scented baits. Even on your grub? Yeah. Even on your plastics? Yep. Especially my plastics. And anything that you're going to use tomorrow with trout fishing and you put a scent on it, you need to get that scent off of it when you get home. Because I think they smell it and it's stale for them. I don't think they like the way it smells the next day. And I've seen a lot of baits that I've tried stuff like that with, and they just kind of ignore it, you know. And I'll go out to the shop and get a rag, and spray them with WD-40 and clean it all off. WD-40 cuts it off. The other thing you use is Dawn. Dawn will cut it off in a heartbeat and leave it completely neutral smelling. By the way, for those of us that have dogs, I found out that Dawn kills fleas. So you can wash your dog with Dawn and kill the fleas on the dog. Just a little bit. It's an antibacterial. It's an enzyme eater and it just disturbs the chemistry of the flea. That came from a Westminster dog show um, judge. I got yeah, Dawn dog from now on. What, what do you think about the like the Z-Man sentence baits like that? Z-Man are great, but I won't give you two cents with one if I'm going to put it on a lid hit because it's going to wear out in the first three casts and it's going to slide down every time you cast it. And you go to jig it and it's going to... You ever use super lead? <laughs> I'm going to go get a regular old grub just like that. And I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your Z-Man any day you want to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Just let me know. Um, that's just No, I've experienced exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And uh, I, I saw on, on one of the fishing shows on TV, a guy, guy takes a little bit of super glue and before he mashes it yeah. up. And it keeps it on there. Yeah. You know, but why bother, man? I just... You, you said you like you like the lead heads with just just no marking. Yeah, just nothing on them. I use a lot of uh, salt water blue candy water stuff, blue water candy blue stuff, water candy. and um, that's one of Jody's right there. And it's sharp. It's good. Yeah, I've, I've used and, those um, before. It holds the grub on it real well. I was just curious about the eyes. You know, some of these newer ones got big, flashy eyes on them. You don't think that's beneficial? I don't think the fish can look at the eye of something that's going <laughs> You know, I, I just don't think they can, you know? Can you read the license plate going down the road of the car in front right, of you most of the time? time. <laughs> Still trying to figure out how the police can read it, you know? <laughs> they gotta have something that takes a picture of it and goes, hey, here's the license plate. Because I can't read it, you know? I can't tell people got seat belts on most of the time, but you know, I don't think the eyes are that big a deal. I think the clearer the water, the more it might make a difference. But down here, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. It's kind of how I look at my fly fishing. I don't think I need an eight or 10 foot leader on the end of the fly line to catch fish down here. Matter of fact, I know I don't because I use a lot of five foot leaders and stuff down here. And I catch a lot of fish on fly with. I just don't think it's that big a deal. Do I believe in fluorocarbon? Yes, I do. Do I use fluorocarbon? All the time. Fluorocarbon sinks. That's one of the reasons why I like it. You know, it it's, it's, it's molecular structure makes it sink. It doesn't float like mono does. Um, so that's one reason why I like it a lot. 
and I use a lot of popping corks with live bait and one of the things that I like is I use flounder hooks and these happen to be owners right here I use mostly um, mustads and I use the unfinished because I want it to rust real fast so if I break one off it'll rust out in a week and it'll come out so I'm not real picky on it you know I'm also cheap when it comes to buying tackle and stuff I don't spend a whole lot of money on a lot of stuff um, but the other thing is I use a lot of short leaders I'll actually retie this till it's about that big and even when you're using a lid head or something like that you can run it right up below the bottom of the cork. They're going to find it, and they're not going to be scared of the cork. And a drum will sit there and eat the cork. I was going to say, a drum will eat the cork. Most all my corks have got teeth marks in them.